This is a day in the word with Minister William Ryan. I pray that the word today will enrich your lives. I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will do something great and mighty in your lives from today. God bless you. It's good to be with you again. Uh, today we're going to deal with uh, end time. Okay, We're going to deal with Islam and Bible prophecy. Now, it is believed that Islam is connected to Bible prophecy some way or the other. Let me first read um, 1 John 2, 22 to 24. He says now, who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is, he is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you, which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. Moving right along, I'm going to read something else. Isaiah 48, 16. This is significant. He said, Come near to me, hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, I was there. And now the Lord and His Spirit have sent me. That scripture in Isaiah is basically, Isaiah is prophesying and Jesus is speaking through Isaiah, basically saying, this has not been hidden. I have been there from the beginning. See, and he's showing, he's talking about the Father and he's talking about the Spirit and he's talking about himself. He's basically saying, here is the Trinity presented to you. It is not hidden. It hasn't been hidden. Now, this battle okay, is, of, is of great spiritual uh, proportion. What we hold sacred as Christians, in a sense, is, is an abomination to Islam. And what Islam holds sacred, it's an abomination to the God of the Bible. I am going to read Surah 4. 171. Hear this. It says, People of the book, do not exceed the limits in your religion and attribute to Allah nothing except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger of Allah. And his command that he conveyed unto Mary and a spirit from him which led to Mary's conception. So believe in Allah and in his messengers. Right? And do not say Allah is a trinity. <laughs> Give up this assertion. It would be better for you. Allah is indeed just one God. Far be it from his glory that he should have a son. To him belongs all that is in heavens, in the heavens and in the earth. Allah is sufficient for a guardian. So you know what that's saying. It's forbidding Christians to believe that our God is a triune God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And we see that the Bible says in 1 John, he who, he who denies the Son has not the Father. Right? You cannot deny the Son, but yet you have the Father. If you deny the Trinity, you have nothing. And this is what we hold there. And Islam holds it as an abomination. So that's what I was trying to explain to you. What we hold there is what they hold as an abomination and vice versa. Now Surah 18 verse 4. It says, and also to warn those who say Allah has taken 
to himself a son. Basically the same thing. Those who say includes the Christians, the Jews, and the Mushrik Arabs who assign offspring to Allah. 18.5, a thing about which they have no knowledge. Neither they nor their ancestors. Dreadful is the word that comes out of their mouth. What they utter is merely a lie. Now let's talk about the, um, the great dragon, which is Satan. And he has planted this lie in the hearts of men. We know that Islam is a political system. It's not a religion. It's a political system that keeps women in bondage, does not give any regard for women. And what its main aim is, is to control the world through uh, a, a legal system. Okay? That's what it wants to do. It wants to control the world through a legal system, its own law. It wants to come and set up its own law. And that law is Sharia. Okay? The Sharia law. And that is basically what it wants to do. But we see that according to the Bible, that Islam has a spirit of the Antichrist. And so we realize we do not worship the same God, Allah and Jehovah, or Yahweh. They're not one and the same. They're two different gods. Now, I looked at many scriptures concerning Bible prophecy. And I believe it's very clear that the, uh, the head of the beast that was wounded, remember, in, in, um, in one of those, uh, I think in Revelation, they talked about the, the beast that was wounded. I, I believe the Ottoman Empire that was defeated. That is that head um, that was wounded. And believe it or not, it committed a lot of atrocities against, against Christians. What, the first Holocaust was not the Jewish Holocaust. The first Holocaust was, was a Holocaust that the, the Ottoman Empire basically, um, they were, they were um, a part of, or, or they were the instigators of that while Islam was being spread. Okay, they, they killed and they wounded a lot of Christians, but you don't hear any talk about it, you know. So I believe that, and that is Turkey. Ottoman Empire is Turkey, and I believe that the uh, empire is going to be restored. Okay, and looking at this thing for, for quite a while, I believe that the Ottoman Empire will be uh, restored. And that is the head that will come back, that will be healed. So keep your eyes on Turkey. A serious note, we need to keep our eyes on Turkey. There's a lot going on right now, but as I go through, you'll understand where I'm going. I also believe that Saudi Arabia, now I'm, I'm, I'm treading some deep waters right now, but this stuff has to get out. We need to start thinking. I believe that Saudi Arabia is the harlot that is riding on the beast. And I have my reasons for that. And it's oil is the wine. That cup that she was, she was drinking from is that abomination, the oil that it, it has given to the world to make the world drunk. The, the, the world has gotten drunk on its wine. The wine is Saudi Arabia's oil. Okay? And that is found in Revelation 17. Well, believe it or not, okay, it says that the harlot will be destroyed. And guess what? The harlot is going to be destroyed by a league of nations who hates her and her Sunni brand of Islam. Okay, it said that mystery Babylon shall be no more. Now Mecca is the city of choice. Mecca is one of the holiest places in Islam. And I'm going to tell you something that you need to keep your eyes on Saudi Arabia. Keep your eyes on Mecca because I personally believe and it's believed in, 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 in um, the Christian circles in these end times that Mecca will be destroyed. As a matter of fact, it was mentioned uh, in the Quran that something is going to happen and Mecca will be destroyed. Okay, um, now Isaiah 21 verse 9. It says, and look, here comes a chariot of men with a pair of horsemen. Then he answered and said, 
Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And all the carved images of her gods, he has broken to the ground. Go to Revelation 18, uh, verse 7 to 11. Okay? It says, In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen, and I'm no widow, and, uh, and will not see sorrow. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. Standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one will buy, or no one buys her merchandise anymore. That is so clear. So again, we're talking about Saudi Arabia. And the belief is that Saudi Arabia is going to be nuked. On a serious note, this is no joke. It may, it may seem funny to some of you, but this is serious. Because the Republic of Iran is predominantly Shia. And Iran is going to be a significant player in fulfilling this prophecy. Believe it or not, when I tell you, it is, it is believed that this country is on its way to acquiring nuclear weapons. And they can, you, you know, as you see, they're trying to stop her from, from doing so. But she will. At some point, Iran is going to acquire nuclear weapons. And I'm telling you, that nuclear weapon is going to be used on Saudi Arabia. If you notice what's happening lately, we have a situation in Yemen. Iran is basically on one side. And Saudi Arabia now has come in on the other side. The rebels, Iran is backing them. They have the same belief. And the, the government, uh, Saudi Arabia is backing the government. We have, we have the stage is being set right now for these, these things to take place. Okay, uh, we know that um, there's a hatred of the Sunni, the Sunni, sorry, Sunni-dominated Saudi Arabia, and that's why it's going to meet its demise. Iran has major, major issues with Saudi Arabia, its kingdom, the way how it's set up, its its brand of Islam, everything. It's a big, big, big problem for Iran, and they won't sit around much longer and deal with, with, with Saudi Arabia. There's a lot of countries that hate Saudi Arabia because they, they feel like Saudi Arabia is flaunting itself in front of the rest of them. And they can't stand the whole setup and the whole system. So believe me when I tell you, Saudi Arabia, from Scripture, Saudi Arabia is going to meet its demise. Okay, And Saudi Arabia has been spoken about. Um, you see names like Dedan, you see Sheba, uh, you, you, see, you see a few places, when you check the old maps, and you see where those places are, that is Saudi Arabia, okay? That is Saudi Arabia. So, it's been mentioned many times, and um, the judgment of God is coming. So, I'm telling you, Islam is a major place. There's a lot going on. You know, lately, um, we've been looking at, at the scriptures, uh, end time prophecy, because Islam is such a powerful entity in the world. You see what's going on. You see what ISIS is doing. You, you know, you, you know the things that uh, Muhammad talked about and, and, you know, the Mahdi that they're waiting for. The Mahdi is the um, Antichrist. Okay, the Mahdi is the Antichrist. And for them, this person is a good person. 
for us, we know what that signifies. You know, this is the one that the puppet of, of, of Satan, in a sense. So for them, it's a good thing that that is their Messiah that's coming. But we know that the Mahdi is going to be the Antichrist. It's amazing the parallels between the Bible and the Quran and the things that are coming out from both. Okay. But as a Christian, we know what's going to take place. You know, they've been duped because the enemy, the devil has duped them. So they've been fooled to think that, you know, this is something good that's going to happen. You know, but in, in, in later on, I'll get into some more stuff. Okay, later on. So you stay tuned. You watch because more and more is coming. But this is just a tip of the iceberg. I wanted to mention to you the, set, the stage is being set. Iran and, and Saudi Arabia, they're going to face off. And, and Saudi Arabia is going to be nuked. Mark my word, Saudi Arabia is going to be destroyed. Mecca is a city of choice they're going to go after. But I believe the whole of Saudi Arabia is going to be wiped out. According to scripture, that's going to be it. See, what has been hidden is now coming to light. You see, when John um, and, and, and even um, Daniel, when they got the prophecies, they did not fully understand what some of the stuff was saying. It was sealed up and it was hidden. This is the time now that it's been revealed. Now the understanding to a lot of it is, is, coming, is coming to pass. So I'll tell you something, okay? You keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes on the eastern skies. You know, lift up your head because our redemption is drawing nigh. And so until next time, I will say to you, peace be unto you. Shalom. God bless you.